So yeah, I decided to start a new tutorial series on game development in Python using Pygame. Now, why Python and Pygame? Isn't Python like super slow? Well, there are a number of reasons why you would want to use Python to make games. If you're someone who knows Python and wants to dive into making games for the first time, this is a perfect opportunity just for that. But then, why not just use Unity, Unreal Engine, or Godot? If you've previously made a few games on other engines and want to get into creating your own game engine, Pygame might be the place to start from, as it doesn't really offer a friendly UI to work with. Instead, Pygame is a wrapper for SDO2, a graphics library that's used for displaying graphics. So you'd mostly be staring at code, which could set the tone for working on a game engine. And who said you can't make a game engine with Pygame? You totally can, but we're not going to be making a game engine. We will make a fun little top-down shooter game through the process of which you would learn the basics of Pygame. We will cover different kinds of topics, such as displaying shapes, taking input, adding images, animating sprites, collisions, projectiles, enemy AI, making UI elements such as texts, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Hopefully by the end of this tutorial series, you'll be able to make your own games with Pygame. So let's get started. Alright, before we actually start, there are a few prerequisites. To understand the following tutorials, you would need to know the basics of Python and object-oriented programming. Assuming that you have Python installed and you're using some code editor, we want to first install the Pygame library. I'm using PyCharm and I personally recommend using it for programming in Python. Since I'm using a virtual environment, I will just open the Python packages tab and install the Pygame library in there. If you're not using a virtual environment, then just open the command line and write pip install Pygame. So now that you have installed Pygame, let's get coding. The first thing that you're going to want to do is import the Pygame library, like so. Then you would want to initialize the modules of Pygame by writing pygame.init. So today we're actually going to cover how to make a window, a basic game loop. We are also going to be drawing shapes and we will create a player object which we will be able to move around using input. First of all, let's make a window. I'm going to start off by typing window equals pygame.display.set mode. And in here, I want to pass in a tuple, which will hold two variables. And these would essentially be the dimensions of our window. Next, uh, we can also set the caption of our window by using pygame.display.set caption. And in here, you can pass in a string variable. I'm just going to call it Pygame Tutorial. Now, we already have a window, but before we can launch our program, we should create a basic game loop. So we're going to write a while loop. It's not true. We are going to, first of all, fill our window with some color. You do that by tapping out window.fill, and you have to pass in a color. And you pass in colors by uh, passing in a tuple with three values, red, green, and blue. So they go from 0 to 255. Then we also need to update our display by writing pygame.display.update. Uh, now, you could also use flip, but essentially from what I've read in the pygame docs, update is actually more efficient but two of them actually function in pretty much an identical way. They just use different methods to perform this action of updating the display every frame. So right now, if we launch our game, we are going to see a black window. The reason why it's black is because we passed zero values in here for red, green, and blue. Now, if we make them all 255, then we're going to have a white screen. And if it's just going to be 255 for the red value, then guess what? We're going to have a red screen. So yeah, we basically created a window, which is the basis for our Pygame program. The next thing that we want to do is add in a clock. 
and it's important because the clock is what's gonna limit the update frames per second you know there are different kinds of computers that may run this program and uh, without the clock in some computers the game might run faster due to the processor being more powerful so yeah that's why we need the clock and, on, and in order to create a clock you would just create a variable clock and you're gonna make it equals to pygame dot time that's another module now and you're gonna type in clock now that we've created the clock right before the update function we're gonna pass in clock dot tick and in here you want to give some sort of frame rate number i like to go with 60. now that's that's not going to change anything for now but later once we start adding actual moving objects uh, you might notice a difference if you change the frame rate now let's try and create a shape let me first change the uh the fill color of the window and let's try and make a square or a rectangle now in order to do that you're going to write pygame.draw and as you can see we have several methods actually in here we're going to write rect the first argument that takes is a surface the window is actually the surface that we created so we have to pass in the window and then we have to pass in a color let's make our rectangle red the next argument is another tuple but it will consist of uh, four integers so the first two are the x and y coordinates the next two are the width and the height so if we set the width to 200 and the height to 100 we should see a rectangle now as you can see the rectangle showed up on the top left corner because the top left position of the screen is actually the position where x and y are equal to zero so if we change the x value accordingly to say uh, 600 then we should expect the rectangle to go right there you go and if we change the y value to something like 600 as well then it's going to drop down as well so that is how you draw a rectangle we can draw some more shapes let's try drawing a circle for example Uh, so there we go we now have made a circle as you can see so now that we've learned to draw some shapes let's actually try taking some input from the user let's create a movable player for that we're going to need to handle events um, and right now it's also important to um, handle those events because we can't close our application let's try and fix that so the first thing that you should do in the game loop is check for events using for loop for event in pygame.event.get first thing that we're going to check is for the event type to be equals to pygame.quit if the user wants to quit then we're just going to exit the application so let's just go ahead and check that out there you go the next thing that we want to do is now check for input there is a specific type of event that happens when a key is pressed so we say event.type equals to pygame.key down and right in here we can check for what kind of key is actually getting pressed so we could say if um, event.key is equals to game dot k underscore left so before we actually write anything in our if statement let's actually um, first declare some variables so we're going to have uh, a player input variable which is actually going to be a dictionary holding for booleans we're going to have a uh, left so we're going to have four different keys a left right and each one of them is going to return a boolean type so that i either be true or false and this is important because we want to see what keys are being pressed and whenever some key is being pressed we want to move the player accordingly now we're going to use this dictionary in this if statement 
I'm gonna take the player input, take left, and uh, set it to true. Another thing that we want to do is have another variable for keeping the track of the velocity of the player, and that'll be a list holding two elements, the x and y values, or how much the x position will change and how much the y position will change. And before that, let's actually make some more variables for the player's x position and for, for the player's y position. Now let's finish off this if statement for the other keys. I'm just going to do that real quick. And then we also want to do the same thing for when the player actually raises their fingers from a key on the keyboard. So what I propose doing is putting this into another function. So let's take this bit of code and copy it over to some function because we're going to need it again but with slight different changes. Let's make a function called check input. We're going to pass in the key and the value. We're going to replace the key to be this and replace true with the value. And now all we're going to do is just check input event dot key and the value to be true if we press some sort of key. Now let's check for the event of key up. So like I said, we're going to call this function again so that we don't have to rewrite all of our code. And instead of setting the player input values to true, we're going to set it to false. Let's actually make it so that our circle would be the player. So instead of passing in our own positions for the circle, pass in player x and the player y variables for the position. So now based on the input that we get, let's actually set the velocity for the player. So player velocity. So we're going to start from the zeroth index, which should be the x velocity. Like I mentioned before, we have an array called player velocity. And the first element of the array will be the x velocity. And the second element would be the y velocity. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the x velocity based on the input. If you actually don't know, in Python, booleans can be easily converted to integers. So what we're going to do is we're going to write player input right minus player input left. Now this might actually look confusing, but essentially what we're doing here is we're setting the values of input into the velocity. So suppose we press the right key, then this right here would be equal to one. And this right here would be equal to zero because we haven't pressed the left key. And that means the X velocity of the player would be equal to one. Now suppose if we instead press the left key, when we press the left key, this right over here would be zero and this would be one, but we have a minus before that. So this would be minus one, meaning that the player's x velocity would be equals to minus one. And if we're going to press both the left and the right key, then uh, one minus one would be zero and the x velocity would be zero. Now let's just do the same thing for the y velocity of the player. But this time is going to be a bit different just because of the way how coordinates actually work in Pygame. What's interesting is that the higher the value for the y axis that, we, that you have, the more downwards the object would go. But if you have a lesser value, it would go upwards instead. So that's why this is kind of the other way around, but pretty much the same thing. But we're not done just yet, but we need to add one more thing to see our player moving. And that is, we need to actually add the velocity to the player coordinates. So we have player x, we're going to add the x velocity. And then we're going to add y velocity to player's y position. So now we should be able to move the uh, player and if we actually press our arrow keys, you can see that the player is actually moving. And this is what we needed to cover in our first tutorial. Now you might notice that the player is actually quite slow. And in order to control the speed, we can create a variable right over here. Let's make another variable and call it player speed. And we're going to set it to something like five. What we're actually going to do is when we're adding our player velocity, 
We're just going to add the player speed over here. Now our player is faster and that's pretty much it. Now before we actually end off, let's do some cleaning up in the code because there is a lot of stuff that could be changed into constants or into variables. Let's just make some constants. So I'm gonna put the constants at the top of our script and let's write white equals to 255, 255, 255. So essentially what I'm doing is storing everything into variables so that it's easier to change them if we have to and it's easier to write them because I think that we would be using those variables in the future or we might be. So it's definitely important to have constants in your script. And I think overall they make reading code easier. So it's good that we're doing it. And last but not least, let's set the frame rate to be its own variable too. Now, one more thing that you could actually do is if you want to use WASD keys instead, then you could just say. So that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you learned something new from it. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe for more content like this video. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, please leave them down in, in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.